Ever found yourself wondering about the different airport gates while waiting for your flight? Well, you're not alone. Airport gates play a pivotal role in the boarding process, acting as the gateways to our airborne adventures. But did you know there are two main types of airport gates? That's right, we've got air bridges and remote bays, each with its own unique characteristics and uses. Now, if you're scratching your head wondering what on earth an air bridge or a remote bay is, fret not. These terms might sound like aviation jargon, but they're actually quite straightforward once you get to know them. And let's face it, we've all experienced that moment of confusion when the announcement comes on, directing us to one gate or the other. So buckle up, folks. Stay tuned as we unravel the mystery behind these airport gates, turning you from a perplexed passenger into an informed traveler. Let's get started, shall we? First off, what is an aerobridge gate? Let's unravel this aviation mystery. An aerobridge gate, also known as a jet bridge, jetway, or sky bridge, is essentially a movable connector. It serves as a direct link between the airport terminal and the airplane, bridging the gap for passengers to board and disembark with ease. Imagine a tunnel-like structure on wheels, extending and retracting, like an accordion's bellows. It's designed to reach various types of aircraft, adjusting in height and length to fit snugly against the plane's door. The aerobridge is what you're walking through when you step directly from the airport terminal onto your flight. One might wonder, why all the fuss about a movable connector? Well, the aerobridge is more than just a convenience, it's a marvel of modern engineering. It's equipped with climate control systems, ensuring a comfortable temperature whether it's a scorching summer day or a chilly winter evening. The aerobridge also offers protection against the elements. No need to worry about getting soaked in a sudden downpour or squinting against a blinding snowstorm. It's your personal shield against the unpredictabilities of weather, making your boarding experience as smooth as possible. Efficiency is another key advantage of the aerobridge. It minimizes the time taken to board and disembark passengers, making it an indispensable tool in busy airports. The quicker the turnover, the better it is for airlines, airports, and of course, the passengers eager to start their journey or return home. There are also different designs of aerobridge gates. The most common is the single aerobridge design, which connects to the door near the front of the aircraft. However, some larger planes may use a double aerobridge design, connecting to two doors simultaneously, thus speeding up the boarding process. Aerobridge gates surely have their perks, don't they? From providing comfort and protection to enhancing efficiency, aerobridge gates play a crucial role in making your air travel experience as seamless as possible. But what makes aerobridge gates so special, you ask? Well, the answer lies in their unique design and functionality. First off, aerobridge gates offer unprecedented convenience. Picture this, you're at the airport, your boarding pass is scanned, and you walk straight from the terminal to your plane without setting foot outside. That's the aerobridge advantage. No buses, no stairs, and definitely no long walks across the tarmac. It's just you, the gate, and a direct path to your seat on the plane. Now, let's talk weather. Whether it's a downpour, a snowstorm, or a heat wave, an aerobridge ensures you're protected from the elements. You don't have to worry about getting soaked in the rain or freezing in the snow. And in the summer, you'll be thankful for the air conditioning. Efficiency is another key advantage of aerobridge gates. They streamline the boarding process, allowing passengers to board directly from the terminal to the plane. This means less time spent waiting and more time spent preparing for your journey or catching up on your favorite book. But here's the kicker. Aerobridge gates can be tailored to meet the needs of different aircraft. There are single bridges which connect directly to the aircraft door, perfect for smaller planes. And then there are double bridges, designed for larger aircraft, which allow passengers to board or disembark from two doors simultaneously. This can speed up the process even further, especially for those long-haul flights on big planes. Now keep in mind that not all airports or terminals have aerobridge facilities, but when they do, they're there to make your journey as smooth as possible. In conclusion, aerobridge gates bring together convenience, weather protection, and efficiency, all in one package. They're designed with the passenger's comfort in mind, ensuring a seamless transition from the terminal to the plane. And with the adaptability of single and double bridges, they cater to a wide range of aircraft, further enhancing their versatility. Clearly, aerobridge gates make for a comfortable boarding experience. Now let's shift our focus to remote bays. Imagine this. Your flight is called, 
and instead of heading straight to the plane, you're directed towards a bus. This is the beginning of your journey into the world of remote bays. Remote bays, simply put, are parking spots for aircraft that are not directly connected to the terminal building. They are often located at a distance from the main terminal. Instead of walking down an enclosed bridge, passengers usually board a bus at the terminal that transports them to the aircraft waiting at the remote bay. Now you might be wondering, why the extra step? Why not just connect every plane directly to the terminal? Well, there are several reasons for this. First, not all airports have the capacity to provide direct terminal connections for all their flights. This could be due to limited space or the sheer volume of flights coming in and out each day. Second, remote bays are often used when an aircraft is too large to be accommodated at the terminal. Yes, those super jumbo jets need their space too. Third, remote bays can also be used when there's a need to manage traffic within the airport. It's all about keeping things flowing smoothly, whether in the air or on the ground, but it's not all logistics and practicality. There's a certain charm to the remote bay experience. It offers passengers a unique perspective, a closer look at the aircraft, and a sense of adventure as they step out onto the tarmac and climb up the mobile stairs. It's like a behind the scenes tour of the airport. Of course, there are challenges too. Remote bays can mean longer boarding times and exposure to weather conditions. But rest assured, airports and airlines always prioritize passenger safety and comfort. So the next time you find yourself boarding a bus after your flight is called, don't be surprised. You're just about to embark on the remote bay journey. Remote bays, although different, serve their unique purpose. But what does boarding through a remote bay entail, you may ask? Well, unlike the direct connection offered by Aerobridge gates, remote bays are typically situated away from the main terminal building. This means passengers are often transported to the aircraft via airport buses. It's a little bit like a mini adventure before your actual journey. Once the bus reaches the aircraft, passengers may disembark using mobile stairs. It's a bit more hands-on, but who can resist the opportunity to snap a photo with a huge aircraft as your backdrop? Now, why might an airport use remote bays? The reasons can vary. It might be due to the size of the aircraft or to reduce congestion in the terminal. Also, smaller airports might use remote bays as a more cost-effective solution compared to building aerobridge gates. Remote bays certainly add a different flavor to the boarding process. It's a unique experience that offers travelers a closer look at the operations of an airport. Now that we know about both, how do they stack against each other? Let's dive right in. Starting with the aerobridge, it's all about convenience. These gates connect directly to the terminal shielding travelers from the elements and offering a seamless boarding experience. On the other hand, remote bays, while requiring a short bus ride, can offer a unique view of the airport's operations. From an efficiency standpoint, aerobridge gates have the upper hand, enabling faster boarding and deboarding. However, remote bays provide flexibility, especially at congested airports or for larger aircraft that might not fit at the terminal. In terms of comfort, Aerobridge gates take the lead again, thanks to the shelter they provide from the weather. But let's not forget the thrill of boarding via a remote bay, especially for aviation enthusiasts who relish the up-close interaction with the aircraft. As you can see, both have their own advantages and uses. Each gate type fits into the intricate puzzle that is the world of air travel, enhancing our journey in its own unique way. So, next time you're at an airport, you'll know what to expect. You might wonder, will my gate have an aerobridge or will it be a remote bay? You now know that this could depend on several factors such as the size of your aircraft or terminal congestion. You've learned that aerobridges offer the comfort of a direct walkway from the terminal to the plane, shielding you from the elements and providing a quick and efficient boarding process. On the other hand, remote bays, although they may involve a short bus ride and potential exposure to weather, are essential in managing airport traffic and accommodating larger aircraft. Both have their roles in the intricate choreography of airport operations. Remember, the goal is the same, to get you safely on your way to your destination. Understanding these gate differences can indeed enhance your travel experience. Safe travels.